Imagine this. You, alone on the moon. There's no sound, no wind, the horizon stretches endlessly in all directions, a barren wasteland beneath your feet, and above you, a black sky scattered with stars that don't twinkle. No air, no atmosphere to distort their light. And in the middle of this void, looming like a giant watchful eye, is Earth. But here's where it gets unsettling. There are stories, real ones, from the astronauts who've been here, all 12 of them. Even with all their training, even with all their preparation, they couldn't shake a feeling of profound unease. Like being stranded in a vast, cosmic desert. The strange, surreal sense that something wasn't quite right. And now, you have to ask yourself, if even the most highly trained astronauts felt this fear, what exactly is it about the moon that provokes such an intense reaction? Why does this cold, silent rock inspire terror in the hearts of the very people who conquered it? Today, we're about to find out. Welcome as we unravel the mysteries of the moon, a world so close, yet so alien. From the haunting feeling of gazing back at Earth from a quarter of a million miles away, to the bizarre truth of time itself on the moon. What does it really feel like to stand on the surface of our cosmic guardian? Two, one, zero. Let's begin with those pioneers. Only 12 astronauts have ever set foot on the moon. 12. Let that sink in. From the moment Neil Armstrong's boot touched the lunar soil in 1969, these explorers ventured where no human had ever gone. Their missions weren't just scientific, they were deeply human, capturing something primal in all of us, the hunger to know what lies beyond. But here's where things get strange. Every one of those astronauts reported feeling an eerie sense of detachment, as if Earth itself was no longer real. When you're standing on the moon, looking back at our blue planet, you're not just seeing home, you're seeing everything. Everything you've ever known, every human life, every city, every ocean, spinning silently in the void. Can you imagine that? Seeing Earth not as a living, breathing world, but as a tiny, fragile marble suspended in the endless darkness of space? And realizing how small we truly are? Now let's talk about time. Not in hours, or days like we're used to, but in the way the moon experiences it. A single day on the moon, get this, lasts 29 Earth days. That's right, from sunrise to sunset, you're looking at two weeks of blazing sunlight, followed by two weeks of darkness. Here's where it gets even stranger. When you first see the sun creeping over the horizon, it doesn't rise like it does here on Earth. No, on the moon, it takes seven whole days for the sun to climb halfway through the sky. Seven. Imagine standing there day after day watching the same sunrise. Time itself feels like it's stretching, slowing down. The minutes blur into hours, the hours into days. It's almost like the universe itself is telling you, you don't belong here. And when the sun finally sets, you're plunged into 14 long, cold days of night. But here's where it gets even crazier. Let's talk about Earth. How it looks from the moon. We're used to seeing the moon from Earth as a small, distant object. But on the moon, Earth is a colossal, glowing sphere. And it's not just big, it's bright. 50 times brighter than the moon ever appears to us. Earth reflects sunlight so intensely that it lights up the lunar surface. It's not moonlight on the moon, it's Earthlight. Standing there, bathed in the glow of your own planet, the irony hits you. In this strange new world, it's Earth that provides the light, not the other way around. And you could live, work, even thrive in that glow. No need for artificial lights. It's like our planet is watching over you, even from afar. But as you stand there, gazing at Earth, something else happens. You notice it's not moving, not a millimeter. The Earth from the moon is fixed, stuck in one spot, hanging there in the sky, eternally. That's because the moon is tidally locked to Earth. One side of the moon always faces us, never turning away, never changing. Now think about this. If you're on the far side of the moon, you'd never see Earth again. You'd be cut off, lost in the eternal night of space, forever hidden from your home planet. No wonder the far side of the moon has always been shrouded in mystery. Some people believe there could be alien bases there, or that something strange lurked beyond our view. For years, the far side remained a mystery, out of sight and out of reach. 
But let's get back to the surface, the moon itself. It's covered with thousands of craters, over 33,000 of which are more than a kilometer wide. The most famous of them all? Newton Crater. This colossal pit is nearly 9,000 meters deep, deeper than Mount Everest is tall. Can you picture it? Standing at the edge of a chasm so vast, it feels like you could fall into the void itself. The moon has been bombarded for billions of years, taking hit after hit from asteroids and comets. And here's the kicker. It's been acting as a cosmic bodyguard for Earth. Many of the impacts that hit the moon could have easily struck Earth. Without the moon standing in the way, who knows how many times our planet might have been devastated by these celestial bullets. Just imagine. If some of the most massive craters on the moon had formed on Earth instead, entire civilizations could have been wiped out. We owe our existence in part to the moon's silent, tireless protection. It's a giant shield, standing between us and the chaos of the universe. But there's one last fact that will blow your mind. Most people think the moon simply orbits Earth, right? But that's not entirely true. In reality, both the Earth and moon are orbiting a common point, a berry center, just off the center of Earth. We're locked in a cosmic dance, not just the moon around us, but both of us spinning around this invisible point in space. Imagine standing on the moon with a telescope, gazing up at Earth. You could watch entire continents drift by, slowly rotating as Earth spins. Africa, Asia, the Pacific, an entire world turning beneath your gaze. But here's the thing, even with the most powerful telescope, you wouldn't see a single sign of human life. No cities, no cars, no lights. From that distance, humanity simply vanishes. And that's the most humbling part of all. From space, Earth looks alive, but eerily silent. In the grand scheme of the cosmos, we're so small, so fragile. Life on Earth has existed for over 3.5 billion years, but in that time, the planet has endured five mass extinctions. We've been lucky. And looking at the moon, you realize just how many near catastrophes we've survived how many asteroid impacts the moon has taken for us. The question is, how long can we keep getting lucky? The moon is both a shield and a reminder. A shield because it's protected us from countless asteroid impacts. A reminder because it shows us how small and vulnerable we are in the grand scheme of things. Even with all our advances in technology, even as we reach farther into space, we remain just a tiny part of the universe. But perhaps that's the beauty of it, realizing that despite our smallness, we've come so far. From the first time we looked up at the moon to the moment we set foot on it. And who knows? Maybe one day, we'll look back at Earth not from the moon but from Mars, or even farther. But for now, we'll keep looking at the moon and wonder about the mysteries it still holds. Until then, keep looking up, keep asking questions, and remember, there's always more to discover.